for this second try I've put the ethanol onto the sand first and then I'll put the sugar set in bicarbonate mixture on top of that. Let's see if we get a different result this time. Maybe a bit more, what the heck. Hopefully this will work a little bit better. Okay, we've started to foam up on the side. The side and the far side. Cinder, sit, sit. Good girl, stay. I'll tell you what, this generates quite a lot of heat. It's fairly warm, I'm about half a meter away. Cinda, say hi. Good girl. Alright, I'll just leave the phone there and see what we get, hey? Eh? That's the neighbour's dog. Not my lovely puppy. Okay, so the column is actually starting to grow up now. Ken, this is a better one if you want to come and see. Alright, stand back here. Stand back here behind me. That's it. See, this one's growing up out of the pile, isn't it? Okay, so remember I told you that first one, if it didn't work, that doesn't matter. It was our first time, hey. And if things don't work, we change a bit. We try again, yes? The thing I changed this time was I put the uh, ethanol onto the sand first, can stand back, and then I put the uh, sugar mixture on second, okay? Yep. So that's what I did different. Ken, come back here. Come back here. The wind is blowing that way. You need to move back. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so I put the fuel on first to catch fire and then I put the sugar and baking soda on top, okay? And that has made it work much better, hey? Mm -hmm. I don't know how long the, the snake will grow, but at least it's working better, right? How will we make the head? The head of the snake? Oh, well, we don't actually make a, a head of a snake. It's just called... Uh, the carbon snake or the sugar snake experiment. That's that's what we cause. It kind of yeah. You know, it just gets long, right? Like a snake. I was just about to say I think that's about as far as it will grow and then of course naturally it starts growing a bit more. It's been sitting there for a wee while so I was about to give up on it. Get the phone and go for a bit of a 3D tour. So yeah, definitely sort of slanted off to the right now. Fell over a bit. So 
So a little bit of action going down at the base. Really not much though. I might actually uh, pull this down. So all I'm doing now is just exposing any uh, leftover ethanol and just burning that away. I don't want any ethanol left in my sand when I get rid of this. So uh, now would be a good time to bring out the marshmallows. And over to the right we have our snake. Okay, so a short, fat snake. Uh, now, this is carbon, but it's very, very light and fluffy. Now, you're not going to be able to tell that. Um, <laughs> but take my word for it. Very light and fluffy. Lots of CO2 gas mixed up in this carbon here. So, very, very light. Light and fluffy. There we go. That's about the best uh, description I can have for it at the moment. Light and fluffy. Squishy. And now, of course, for the science behind it, or the reactions. Let's look at what was actually going on. Well, we made some carbon. It's called a carbon snake for a reason, yeah? Uh, so we had C12H22O11. This is the formula for sucrose. This is what actually gave us our carbon, because this formed some carbon, yay, some elemental carbon. It also gave us some water. Okay, so there we go. There we go, we had our sucrose, we got our carbon, we got some water. Now, of course, any good uh, chemical equation has to be balanced, right? So we actually had 12 carbons. Uh, remember the uh, numbers inside the formula for a compound uh, that tell you how many of that atom you actually needed, right? So we had 12 carbons, so that's fine. In balancing our equation, we will have 12 carbons. So far, so good. Uh, we also had 22 hydrogens and 11 oxygens, right? So we can't create or destroy matter in a chemical reaction, so they all have to be there somewhere. So we need 22 hydrogens. Okay, so each water molecule has two hydrogens. So let's say, what if we had 11 water molecules that would use our 22 hydrogens, okay? Uh, we have to balance the oxygens as well. We had 11, we have to have 11 at the end. Well, hey, look, every water molecule has one oxygen and I had 11 water molecules, so there's my 11 oxygens. So this is quite a straightforward one to balance. That is now uh, balanced. And just for the sake of tidiness, we'll get rid of this red. There we go, there's our balanced chemical equation for making our carbon of the carbon snake. All right. Uh, now this water was actually, it wasn't a liquid, it was a gas. Okay, we could put states in here. So carbon was a solid, the sucrose was a solid. There we go. If we're putting in states of the uh, chemical species, we have four options. Okay, we could either be a solid or a liquid or a gas, or we could be aqueous. Okay, so aqueous means um, dissolved in water. It's a watery solution. Okay, uh, so there are our four states that we could uh, put in. But there we go, we've made some carbon, great. So there's one equation. There are actually a few reactions going on in this overall uh, reaction here. Uh, so that's one equation, Grant. Let's uh, look at another one. Because we had the sucrose, we also had, if you remember, some sodium bicarbonate. So we had some sodium bicarbonate is hydrogen carbonate. Okay, so the formula is sodium hydrogen carbonate. That's its, its proper name and there's a formula. And if we're going with states, okay, well let's keep it in states because that was also a solid. Uh, now, this one actually decomposed, okay? Um, so this is a decomposition reaction, much like the um, sucrose one that we already looked at was a decomposition reaction. And after this, we'll look at a couple of uh, combustion reactions. So this one actually decomposed and formed sodium carbonate. So we're, we're getting rid of the, the bicarbonate and replacing it with the carbonate, right? Now, carbonate ion is CO3 2 minus, which tells us we're going to need two pluses. All right, those two pluses, if we're getting rid of the H, the pluses have to come from the sodium, but the sodium ion is just a one plus. So we're actually going to 
have two of those sodiums there, right? Let's do some balancing as we go. If I'm making two sodiums, I had to start with two sodiums, right? So each sodium hydrogen carbonate only had one sodium atom, but I'm gonna have to end up with two. So we start with two of the whole sodium hydrogen carbonates. Okay, so um, there's one of our products, right? So we start with reactants, we're forming products. This actually was solid as well, mixed up in with the carbon. Uh, now this, this stuff here, sodium carbonate's uh, a bit of a whitish color. The carbon that we made gave us the black. Um, so it was, you know, dark looking. The carbon stack was dark looking, but it wasn't like really black, right? Because it wasn't just the black carbon. It was, had some sodium carbonate mixed up with it. And that's quite a, um, quite a light color. Uh, now, this, <laughs> this equation is in a balance uh, because um, we also need some water and some CO2, right? Remember, everything has to be balanced, right? So we're going to make um, some carbon dioxide. Now, we started with two carbons, right? Every sodium hydrogen carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, had one, but we had two of those molecules. So all up, we actually had two carbons. We have only used one. Okay, so we'll use another one in making a CO2 molecule. Now this is a gas. Remember the snake was really light and fluffy, right? So we're going to be making plenty of water uh, vapor, water gas, and um, CO2 gas along the way, right? To make it all that, that light, fluffy um, snake that we ended up with. So we've got some CO2 and we also get some water vapor, right? Gas. Cool, now is this balanced? Well, let's have a check. Uh, the sodium we balanced, the carbon we, we just balanced by adding another carbon here with this CO2. Um, what about the hydrogen and the oxygen? Well, we started with two hydrogens, one for each molecule, but we had, remember, two of those molecules. So here we go, our two hydrogens balanced. We had three oxygens for every uh, sodium bicarbonate, but we had two of those sodium bicarbonates, so we had six oxygens. Well, we've already used three over here. We used another two over here. We only need to use one more, and sure enough, we did just use one more. So there we go, that equation is now balanced. And once again, we can get rid of our little underlining and just leave our equation. And there we go, that is a balanced chemical equation for the decomposition of the sodium hydrogen carbonate. But the story doesn't end there, because I did mention we also had some combustion reactions going on, right? Some of the sugar didn't just break down, it just didn't decompose and give us our carbon, it actually uh, burned in the oxygen in the air, right? So that's combustion, it's a combustion reaction. And of course the ethanol, um, which supplied the initial heat to get this reaction going, that was <laughs> certainly burning, wasn't it? that was combusting as well. So a combustion reaction is where a hydrocarbon, something with carbons and hydrogens, right, it's the uh, majority of its makeup, uh, reacts with oxygen. Right? That's a combustion reaction. So let's go our sucrose first. What do we have? C12H22O11 is the equation for our sucrose. We were putting in states, weren't we? Did I put all the states in this previous one? Yes, I did, good. Um, now that, that was a solid and we reacted that with oxygen in the air. Now, a couple of things about oxygen. Firstly, it's a gas, we should, we all know that. But secondly, it's a diatomic molecule, right? It's not just O, it comes as O2. Now, anytime you ever react anything with oxygen, uh, don't just put plus O, make sure you always put plus O2, right? It's diatomic. Uh, so, okay, we reacted this stuff. We have 12 carbons. Let's make 12 carbons by um, making 12 carbon dioxides. Now, in balancing, uh, sometimes you'll balance one thing and then you'll go to balance another thing and then the first thing got unbalanced and you have to you know, put in more of that first thing somewhere. You kind of just go back and forth until it all works out, right? So I'm, st I'm throwing down my 12 CO2s right now. That could change later on as I balance the rest of the equation, okay? Uh, actually, in this case, it won't. But you know, just be aware that when you're balancing, you could think, okay, that one ticked off, yes, but then you'll come back and rebalance it later on, yeah? Cool. Uh, now, that was a guess. Remember, that was one of the gases that was making this thing all light and fluffy. Uh, and the other gas was the H2O. Uh, as a gas, not as a liquid, right? Uh, that was also making this thing nice and light and fluffy. Yeah? Uh, and now, of course, we have to balance. So let's see. Uh, we had 22 hydrogens at the start. That was the, that was the only place that we had hydrogens at the start. And this is the only place that we have hydrogens at the end. So we can balance the hydrogens straight up, right? We had 22, each water molecule uses uh, two. So we're going to need 11 of those water molecules. Uh, so 
it's like we'd, we'd balance the hydrogen first because like it's only in one place as a reactant and one place as a product whereas the oxygen is in two places as a reactant and two places as a product so you know we're always gonna just leave that one till last right because it's a bit more complex now hopefully the numbers will actually just work out uh, so we have what have we got here hang on change color red okay so hydrogen is balanced 22 of them as reactants and products carbon is balanced 12 of them as reactants and products let's check our oxygens we need to somehow end up with two oxygens per co2 molecule but we had 12 of those so there's our 24 oxygens and then we need another 11 oxygens over here right well actually you know we can do this without even really doing the math because the 11 that we need from the water we've got those here so if we need another tw uh, 24 oxygens right because we had 12 co2s then we can just have 12 o2s and there's our extra 24 oxygen no problem uh, so there we go that equation is now balanced and in keeping with <laughs> what i have been doing we'll get rid of our little underlines there we go done that is a balanced chemical equation for the combustion of the sucrose uh, we also had some ethanol that was burning in oxygen as well so ethanol well wow, what the heck is the formula for ethanol if you watch my previous video uh, i went a little bit into organic chemistry right uh, and so this is what i drew so eth says two carbons the an says those carbons are single bonded and the ol says there's an oh group a hydroxyl group there um, now we don't often show them but what we actually have around the other carbons because carbon forms four bonds has to be you know something else going on around it our hydrogens right so there we go we can get our um, our formula for ethanol from that so we've got c2 we used two um, carbons now what you could do is write O6, uh, what, what am I saying? <laughs> you would write H6 and then an O because we used six hydrogens and one oxygen, but you wouldn't do that. You would say H5 and OH. So although we did use six hydrogens altogether, this hydrogen here was part of this hydroxyl group. OH is a hydroxyl um, functional group. So we're gonna keep that together okay so you know it's not just about showing how many atoms of you know each type of atom it's also um, in terms of organic chemistry like this showing what functional groups you have all right so but there's our uh, formula for ethanol and um, we know that we combusted this in oxygen so we throw down our o2 remember it's diatomic oh wait we were putting in states weren't we well ethanol liquid oxygen is a gas there we go and why did i put an arrow there we're reacting with the oxygen goodness me there we go so we're reacting with the oxygen in the air great and we are forming um when you do these chemical reactions like it would be nice if you did a plus b react to form c plus d that's fine if you have room um but you know it you can just as easily say that a plus b reacts to form c plus d all right it doesn't really matter if you go across or down generally across is preferred but you know i'm writing big my screen's small so i'm um, showing the products underneath it that, that's fine uh, now when we combust an alkanol uh, oh alcohol remember but i did mention in the my previous video in uh, part one of this whole carbon snake thing that um in organic chemistry alcohols are actually called alkanols right with modern terminology but anyway uh, when we combust an alkanol or when we combust an alcohol uh, we get co2 and we get water now both of these were gas remember we're making lots of co2 as we go along and we're making lots of water as we go along right when we combusted the um the sucrose that we had 12 co2s and 11 waters right um we got a bit more water and a bit more co2 from the decomposition of the sodium bicarbonate um, we got plenty more waters from the decomposition of the uh, sucrose so plenty of co2 gas and h2o gas um, which went into making this snake as fluffy as it as it turned out to be uh, right now we just need to balance this stuff when you're balancing start with the other um, atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen you balance them last because you can easily add some more water or some more oxygen into your equation uh, to balance the hydrogens and oxygen so you always start with the other um, atoms the only other atom in this case we have is the carbon so let's just balance that we need two carbons right because we started with two in the ethanol so that's now balanced um, and then we would balance the hydrogens 
um, and, and we'll do the oxygen last because we can always just add in some O2. So we need six hydrogens. Well, each water uses two, so let's just have three waters. There we go. Uh, and now we'll balance the oxygens. How many oxygens do we need? Well, each CO2 has two of those oxygens, but we've got two of those molecules, so we need four there. Right? And we need another three at the end because um, you know, each water has one, but we have three waters, so we need seven oxygens all up. Well, we had one from the ethanol, so we need another six oxygens. So let's just start with three of these diatomic oxygen molecules. And that means that all up we will use our six oxygens. Right? One from ethanol and... Um, did I say six oxygens? And that would mean we use our seven oxygens, one from the ethanol and uh, six from the oxygen in the air. Uh, and there's our balance equation for the combustion of ethanol. Uh, so there we go, there's the science behind it, well, the chemical reactions behind it. Um, so the ethanol was burning, that um, you know, initially gave us some heat for the starting the reaction to kick it off. Reactions um, need a certain amount of heat to get started, right? Like if you were taking a magnesium ribbon, that will react quite nicely with oxygen, and yet you can wave it around in the air and it's not burning, until you stick it in your Bunsen flame. And I do have a video of this, go watch it at your leisure. Um, but when you stick it in the Bunsen, then it starts reacting with the oxygen in the air, right? It's not reacting with the, the heat of the flame, it's just reacting with the oxygen, but it needed a certain amount of heat in order to get started, right? Um, so same deal here. We added a fuel, well, I added a fuel. Uh, I used ethanol, it burns quite nicely, that supplies heat, kicks the reaction off. Now, this reaction is overall exothermic, it gives out heat, so not just the heat from the burning of the ethanol, but the reaction itself. The overall reaction is exothermic, it gives out more heat, and a lot of that heat went into turning uh, the water into steam, right, into water vapour. That's why all our waters here, I've, I've written none of them as liquid, right, I've written them all as gas, they all got uh, converted to vapour. Uh, so there we go, there are our uh, four reactions, our decomposition of the um, sucrose, our decomposition of the sodium bicarbonate, our combustion of the um, sucrose and our combustion of the ethanol. All balanced, all done. Don't forget to hit the like button. Yeah. And subscribe too, it's up here. And here's another video.